So I'm hoping that you have your word, whether on the phone or your Bible. And we're going to Ephesians 4 and 1. <clears throat> Ephesians 4 and 1. Here we stand for the reading of God's word. After this, you don't have to stand anymore unless you really want to. If your babies need attention, we do have a nursery that's in the back. To my right and to many of you left, we have a system where you can still hear the word in the nursery. If you have Ephesians 4 and 1, say, I have it. <clears throat> and it reads, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. How are you going to do this? With lowliness and meekness with long suffering for bearing one another in love. This is for all of us that have a vocation in the kingdom of God. This is your duties. He said, I want you to walk worthy of the vocation, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Man, that covers all of it. Every space, every inch, God is there. But unto every one of us is giving grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended on up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right there. He left gifts unto men. Hmm. What are the gifts? Go down to 11. And he gave some apostles, some prophets and evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till ye all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Ephesians is equivalent to the book of Joshua. This means you are not playing games. You've come out of the sandbox. You come out of the wilderness. Ephesians is a crossover book for soldiers. And if you are not ready and you still want to hang out in the wilderness, this message probably won't be for you. Get the, hear it later. But for those of you all that are soldiers, and say, I'm ready. I'm ready to do God's bidding and walk worthy of the vocation. This message is for you, not just for today, but for tomorrow and the years to come. Something has not getting ready to change. It already changed. And you got to be ready for the days ahead. I pray that the eyes of your understanding are enlightened. So you can know what is the hope of his calling. The riches of the glory of his inheritance. The exceeding greatness of his power. To us who believe. Spirit of the living God fall fresh on us. Speak out of our mouth like fire. Move in this place in a mighty way. I pray that no imp or devil steal the word from being sown into the hearts of your people. Thank you for your anointing that makes preaching effective. We're not playing games. We want to hear from you. Move in this place in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to give them a crazy praise. Go. Open up your mouth and give him praise. 
Come on, you can do better than that. Open up your mouth and give them glory. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The letter written to the church of Ephesus was a significant letter. And in this portion of the letter, Paul is letting the church know when Jesus ascended back to heaven, he led captivity captive. I don't have time to get into that part, but that is significant that he led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. What an honor that Jesus, when he ascended, he left gifts to us. You would think it would be enough after he died on the cross, redeemed us from the curse of the law, that that would be enough. But when he went back to glory, he left gifts unto the church. My God. God, Psalms 8 says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visits him. You have made us a little lower than the angels. That you would leave gifts to human beings. Oh, we need to give God praise. For Jesus and the gift. Oh, you can do better than that. Somebody show hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4.11 takes it deeper and said this is a part of the gifts that he left. And he left apostles. He gave some apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. Till we all come into the perfecting. Or till we, or we all come into the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ until we reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God as we mature to the full measure of the stature of Christ. So these uh, what we refer to as the five-fold ministry are overseeing and teaching gifts. That's how he set it up. But it's for the purpose of us coming into the unity of the faith the body of the Christ, that we are all uh, moving in the same direction, that we have the same forethought, uh, because he sees us as one man. So he wants us unified on every end. Now consider this, there are diversities of gifts. Overseeing and teaching gifts are not the only gifts he left. According to 1 Corinthians 12, there are diversity of gifts, but the same spirit. Differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it's the same God which worketh all and all. Some were given a word of knowledge. Some were given word of wisdom. Some were given um, gifts of miracles, gifts of healings, gifts of faith, gifts of administration. All these gifts are under the same spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of us all who is over all and through all and in all. The gift that you have, the talent that you have comes from above. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. That's why we say we are fearfully and wonderfully made because not only that you are gifted you are talented, and it is important for our title once again today that you honor 
your gift. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Honor, honor your gifts. These spiritual gifts were given to the church. Why? So the unbeliever could be persuaded. The unbeliever could be persuaded by the gifts that are given us from heaven. And to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. But the gift that you have been given does not belong to you. It's on loan to you. And so you have a responsibility of taking care of your gift. You have a responsibility of handling your gifts the right way. With this wonderful gift that has been bestowed upon you, there is a clause that comes with Ephesians 4 and 1. He says, walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you have been called. You have a responsibility to honor. You have a responsibility to hone and also practice your gift. That which God has given to you, he wants you to be responsible for it and not handle it any kind of way. Because once again, it's on loan to you. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So many people get into trouble. I'm going deeper with this. With spiritual gifts that has been given because they think it belongs to them. And they start handling their gift inappropriately. And if you want to get in trouble with God... Don't handle his gift inappropriately. Whatever gift you have been given, whether it's in church or out of church, sacred or secular, do it to the glory and honor of God. You, the preacher, do it to the glory and honor of God. You, the teacher, Do it to the glory and honor of God. You a missionary or a deacon. Do it to the glory and honor of God. Yep, you are the CEO of the company. Do it to the glory and honor of God. You are the postal worker. Do it to the glory and honor of God. You're the garbage man. Do it to the glory and honor of God. Whatever your hands find to do make sure wonderful people it is to the glory and honor of God because it's not about you boo it's about him and the moment that you start thinking it's about you you are going to get into a whole lot of trouble God has gifted you the talent that you have God put it on you You have treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power will be of God and not of us. Put it on you for a purpose so you could be a light, so you could be a witness, so you could be a salt, and that you could persuade men to Christ. Lord, have mercy. Somebody say, help me, Lord. Now, It's your responsibility to protect your gift. The gift is coming through you, so you have to protect it. Come on, brother Proverbs, what are you saying unto us today? You said to guard our heart. For out of it are the issues of life. I'm getting ready to give you a secret. Your gift is connected to your heart. And the reason why you have not been able to express it because your heart is messed up. Being creative can be dangerous. And that's why you got to hone your gift. You got to make sure that you're taking care of what God has given you. 
because it's connected to your heart. So a real smart devil will send somebody in your path to mess up your heart. So you can't create and you can't use your gifts appropriately. What the enemy wants you to do is mishandle your gift. We see the same thing that happened in the wilderness as the devil is tempting Jesus to misuse your gift, his gift. Now, if you pay attention, he was tempted, but he kept saying the scripture said, the scripture said, the scripture said, not I said, what does the word say? Wonderful people, this is how you fight to protect your gift. Otherwise, you will move out of time. And the enemy was trying to get Jesus to misuse his gift. Can you imagine? If you are the son of God, turn this stone into bread. And he had to come back. Man shall not live by bread alone. But every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Don't mishandle what God has given you. Some of you all are into much trouble right now. Because you mishandled the gift of God. You mishandled. Some of you didn't know. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. You just simply didn't know. But on today, we're going to do better. Somebody show hallelujah. Number two, we want to guard uh -oh, the anointing that accompanies the gift. You are anointed, but you have to guard it. Why are you saying this? Because Lucifer, he was gifted and anointed. Now he's jealous because you have gifts and anointing and you are worshiping God. You have all this gift. Now, something that wasn't taken from him, check it out, is persuasion. He still has persuasion. And that's why he's constantly in your ear to mess up your gift. And he's tempting you to go another direction. Oh, you got to pay attention to this because I'm giving you some stuff. Listen. He has the gift of persuasion and he wants you to follow his lead of manipulating your gift. And once you start manipulating as he does, now we have a serious issue because your gift is being used as manipulation and there will be hell to pay for misusing your gift. You are gifted and anointed, but you have to protect it. That means you got to guard your eyes. You got to guard your ears. You got to guard your associates. It's important because there will be people that's coming in your life to purposely mess you up and cause you to misuse your gift. But somebody say, not today, baby. I got more information. I understand now. I didn't understand before, but now I realize I have a gift and I'm anointed. Oh God. Somebody say, help me Lord. Now, here, here goes another one. You may want to write this down. Know when your gift is not being received. It's your responsibility through the eyes of discernment to recognize when your gift is not being received. He told his disciples, when you go into a town, he said, this is what I want you to do. Go into a house that's worthy and let your peace rest upon it. He said, if they can't handle it, take your peace back. He said, take it back because what I've given you is honorable. What I've given you is spiritual. Special. What I've given you, you have to, uh, uh, don't look at it as second hand. This is first class what I put on you. Yeah. And so if they can't handle it, he said, take it back. If they cannot receive your words, this is what I want you to do. You shake the dust from your feet and keep on moving. 
because in rejection there is protection and direction I'm going to say it again to this side. In rejection, there is protection and direction. They direct, they didn't like you. That's their business. I know the gift of God that's on the inside of me. You're not going to mishandle me, and you're not going to treat me any kind of way. I tell you, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to say later, Gator, after a while, Crocodile, that's your loss. I say that's your loss. The problem is you don't see yourself from the right perspective. And that's why you keep giving your gift to everybody and anybody. But what God has put in you is gold. It's diamonds. It's rubies. You are something special anointed of God and if you mishandle yourself you'll be mishandled when you see rejection coming your way don't take it personally that's their loss I'm going to say it again that's their loss look at your neighbor for the second time and say it's your loss baby I, but that's all right. You don't want me. That's okay. I'm going down the street. Somebody gonna appreciate me. Somebody gonna love me. I don't have to force myself on anybody. Good God from glory. The problem is you trying to force all of you on somebody. They don't have the capacity to receive what you have to give. They don't have it. And now you sitting up here crying about nothing. <laughs> about nothing. Been that, done that. Then you run back into them. You're like, God, what was wrong with me? I, I wasn't in my right mind. I plead temporary insanity. I was trying to give it to a fool. Somebody say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Another thing is, everybody's not going to like you. Everybody's not going to receive you. And you got to get used to that. When folks start acting a fool on your time, you don't have to act out. It's okay. God bless you. I'm moving on. Am I helping anybody today? You got to understand something about your gift. You can't separate ice and water. You are the gift. <laughs> you can't separate ice and water. You are the gift. That's worth writing down. You thought it was a separation. I beg to differ. I am the gift when I walk up. I am the gift. I'm the baller and the shot caller. I got it going on. See, if you don't talk to yourself like this, the spirit of fear will have you for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The Bible says being confident of this very thing. He that has begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And the enemy of your soul don't want you to be confident. He wants you to think you being arrogant. You just being snooty. The devil is a liar. I'm a king's kid. That means there is a responsibility for me to act a certain way, be a certain way, and if you don't like it, that is your problem. I am royalty. I'm not a hood rat. I'm royalty so that means I gotta carry myself in a certain way you think I'm snooty you think I'm uppity that's because you haven't grown up and you don't understand who you are oh Lord it's important to don't prostitute your gift 
don't prostitute your gift. Your gift don't belong everywhere. Preacher, teacher, evangelist, you, you just can't take your gift everywhere. You'll walk out of there barking. You want to go, you just can't go everywhere. Our forefathers did not allow us to eat from everybody's table. And there was a reason. We didn't understand it. But now that I'm older, I realize it may be something erroneous in the dish. Some of y'all in trouble now because you have taken your gift everywhere. God didn't send you, you sent you. And now you're in a whole bunch of trouble because you didn't acknowledge God first. God is, I don't care if they called you to preach. Ask God, is this where I'm supposed to go? If they call you to sing, should I be going to sing over there? You done walked in there with a bunch of witches and warlocks and now you're trying to figure out why you itching all night. You prostituting your gift. Oh honey, I'm going to the musical. <laughs> now you got a spirit on you we can't even pray off. You being around all these folks with all these spirits and then you bring it right back to restoration and I got a labor laying hands on you to cast it out. Because you didn't ask God first. Jesus. Prostituting your gift. It will hurt you. Hurt your witness. And I told you, if folks don't trust you, they won't use you. Before you take that next job, ask God. Is this the job that you have for me? It may look good, but it's not good. Is this my husband? Because you are a gift. Is this my wife? Because you are a gift. Oh, the Lord. Child. You done prophesied and fell all out on the floor and told everybody that was, and we even Ray Charles can see, that is not your husband. That's not your wife. And 10 years later, oh no, no, 10 days later, you divorced. Because you are insisting on giving the gift to dirt and mud and dogs and snoop and Y'all, but, but see, I, it, it's, it's funny, but y'all know I'm telling you all the truth. Some of y'all in here have been in all kind of trouble because you gave your gift to the wrong one. And the good one, you passed on by. Oh, they nice. They just a friend. You wanted the one that was cussing you out and calling you all kind of names and beating you down and telling everybody about, ooh, that's my boo, that's my baby. You crazy. <laughs> Some of us are only happy when things are going wrong. No, you addicted to attention. You just addicted to attention. And you have not been taught how to appropriately handle your gift and from the wisdom and understanding that you are the gift. My God, my God, my God. Jesus. You are. Yes, yes. Jesus. That's why your parents be frowning when you show up with some crazy folk. 
and they tell you that's not the one. Well, they, no, they, they good to me. That's not the one. <laughs> Folks are dying. Fatal attraction for falling in love with the wrong one. Because they didn't see themselves as a gift. And I'm going to tell you something. Listen, listen to what I'm about to tell you. Listen. The Holy Ghost will be tapping you on the shoulder. Be whispering to you. Don't do it. Leave that alone. That's not for you. And you are going to tongues. Right over the Holy Ghost. Talking about I heard. You heard Casper the friendly ghost. Now, I want to talk about honoring the gifts of others. The Bible says, for the body of Christ is one with many members. Now, check this out. One plants, one waters, but God gives the increase. But you got to keep reading when it says the one that plants and waters are one. That means in the body, there's no big I. No little you. This, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm the apostle. I'm the grand pool bar. You call to the body. Where did this star, stardom in the body of Christ come from? People are stars. Folks got bodyguards. Can you imagine? Don't nobody know you. Come on. You got 50 members and 50 bodyguards. 25 adults and 25 children. And you the whole trying to kill you. And this is hurting. It's hurting us. Because now we are going to places looking for an autograph. We got to be set in the front. Why? I've had people come to the church. Well, you didn't allow me to testify. This is not about you. We have so for, forgotten or misunderstood what the body, the church, is all about. There is only one star, and that's Jesus. Just because we are one does not mean we don't have different functions. Now, this is important to understand. Therefore, we have to know when, where our authority begins and ends. Yes, sir. Yes. Honey, I'm saved by grace. You, you see, there, there's, a, there's a humility that goes with that. We, we, was, we was Gentiles. See, this is what, what folk don't understand about Gentiles. It, the, it, this message initially was to the Israelites, which were Jews. Let me help you all understand. It had nothing to do with race. Either you were in covenant or you were not. So then, therefore, that's why we as the Gentiles, I don't care if you're black, white, Hispanic, Chinese, I don't care what color, it may, no, never mind. The Bible is not about that. We the Gentiles, which every race outside of the, of the Jews, listen. We have been given a privilege. We were grafted in. We were adopted into the royal family. Therefore, every single time we walk in the door, we should be praising God because we have access to the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous. I 
can prove this scripturally when the Syphoenician woman, when she went to Jesus concerning her daughter. He said, I didn't come, I only came to save the lost sheep of Israel. I did not come to save the dogs. He was not calling her an animal. He was saying, you are not in covenant with me. He said, my blood has not been shed and it has not hit the mercy seat. But she had so much faith. She said, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And she ended up getting a miracle. This is the reason why we so messed up. You think it's about church when it's actually about covenant. If you understood that God is a covenant God and he fulfills his promise, you will see yourself from the right perspective. And you will understand it's no more Jew or Gentile, male or female, bond or free. We are one in Christ Jesus. All of us are covered with the blood. That makes me and Brother Scott brothers, me and Sarah br sisters and brothers. So we don't get into race. It makes no never mind when you're in the church. We miss it because we don't see ourselves or know who we really are in God. Man, if you start understanding the gift of God that was on the inside of you, you will walk up out of here and you will buy your entire block. It took me years to get to this place to see myself from the right perspective. That's why I'm looking at a building right now. I'm saying, woo, 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 woo. Because I've grown in the Lord and my faith has grown. I said, oh, I know who I am. When you don't know who you are, the enemy of your soul will have you for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And that's why you're behind. That's why things are happening to you. Because you don't know who you are. But the moment that you get to know that you are more than a conqueror through him that loved me. The moment you get to know that I am a king's kid. The moment that you recognize that I am a son. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. That we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us uh, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Yeah. I'm not a Gentile. I'm a son. I'm not outside the gate. I've been accepted into the royal family. The blood hit the mercy seat and rescued me from myself. Rescued me from slavery. Rescued me from bad thinking. Rescued me from poverty. I am somebody. A chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar. Uh oh. Once you get to know that you are a gift on somebody yeah. problem is you've been around a whole lot of people that didn't know who they were yeah. and y'all was feeding each other's dysfunctions yeah. well who do you think I am who do you think I am who <laughs> and then you allow them to tell you excuse me I got a little happy now you got to understand your gift this is where division comes in because some believers, they don't believe they are significant. Division comes in when you don't know who you are. Division comes in, according to 1 Corinthians 12, 15, when you start saying certain things are not significant. You got Bible for that? Yep. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? You're telling me that I don't need my foot? Uh -oh. Or I don't need my hand? The devil is a lie, I need both of them. And it's on one body. And both are significant. If the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body was an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, well, with the smelling. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable. Read it, 1 Corinthians 12, 15. Upon these we bestow more abundant honor, 
and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. This makes so much sense because on my arm, at the back of my elbow, there's skin there. You can squeeze it as hard as you want and feel nothing. It's almost like dead. It's just there. You just squeeze. But it's significant part of the body lets all of us walk around here like scissor hands. That part is for elasticity. So we can move the arm. Sometimes the very thing we think we don't need is the very thing we need. That's why we honor all parts of the body. That's what God is saying. We honor all parts of the body of Christ. I am the pastor. That's nice. That don't mean I'm the big chief and you the Indians. If I don't have members, I'm not a pastor. Ooh, I don't believe I said that, but I sure said it. Because some folks pastoring nobody. And they are pastors. Some folks, they, pa they are bishop with no churches. Wow. High off on that. It's important that we start honoring every part of the body. Nobody is insignificant. All of us are one. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. All of us are in this together. Yes, I have a responsibility. But you know what that means for a pastor? I'm a greater servant with more responsibility. And to much is given, much is required. I don't walk in here and I see a piece of paper talking about where's Deacon Fred. I pick up the paper. I don't call Deacon Fred if I come here alone and the bathroom needs attention. I still get the broom. I still get the bleach. Yes, Lord. That's good, Because we in this together. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Oh, you, I'm just waiting for somebody to do it. You do it. It's your company. It's your business. You lead by example. Yes, sir. You lead by example. It'll never come a time in this church where it's looking and smelling nasty. Because this is God's house. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to get in this and I'm getting out and I'm done. Okay. This is the danger and not honoring your gift. It's a danger. David did not honor his gift and ended up in bed with Bathsheba. Not Jesus. Got the woman pregnant and manipulated and had her husband killed. He didn't honor his gift. Samson did not honor his gift and ended up in the lap of Delilah. He didn't honor his gift. Uh, Judas had access to the Son of God. Can you imagine? He that close to, he saw Jesus walk on water. He saw the 5,000 get, get fed and still betrayed him. Do you not know that Jesus and Judas never had communion again? I know you're trying to forgive everybody. That's nice. Forgive them. That don't mean you're going to have connection. 
you trying to have connection. You think that repentance and forgiveness mean we need to be road dogs and we need to hang out. And uh, No, you stay over there and I'm staying over here. You messed this up. In fact, I don't trust you. So stop getting in my face because I've forgiven you thinking things gotta go back to the way that when Judas betrayed Jesus, he never was in his presence again. I just gave somebody a revelation. Because I'm saving. I just got to I got to No, leave him alone. Yeah. Somebody should have started running on that because I know, I know some of y'all just got, because you think forgiveness means you got to be back in contact with the person again. No, I forgave you. I did it for myself. I released the toxin that was in the side of me and I'm going to allow God to deal with you the way he wants to. But me and you, I'll see you in glory. Cause this is over. Ooh, look at your neighbor for the third time. Say, oh, that's over. I don't even have to talk about it. I'm not marrying them. We're not gonna be boyfriend, girlfriend. We're not gonna even be friends again. I, no, it's over. I did forgive you. That's why I'm nice. When I see you in Walmart, I did speak to you, didn't I? But the relationship is over. Judas only had one opportunity to betray Jesus. And y'all on the tenth time. Yes, he said ten. He said ten. I'm talking to somebody up in here. They already messed over you, and you keep giving them money. They gonna keep doing it until you see yourself from the right perspective. There's nothing wrong with them. There's something wrong with you. You keep giving your child that's unresponsible money. They are having a party. Yes, sir. Why you are sitting where they're working. Worry. It's nothing wrong with the child. It's something wrong with your boundaries. Yes, sir. Moses didn't honor his gift and missed the earthly promised land. His gift was communication. That means he couldn't say everything. He had to be sanctified in front of the people. It's a danger in not honoring your gift. It's a danger. It's a danger. This is important, people of God. This is important. The Israelites did not honor the gift of Jesus being amongst them. Jesus showed up. He said, I am the manna that fell from heaven. He said, I am the way. I'm the truth and the life. He showed up and they did not recognize him. If Jesus walked through the door right now, how many of you would recognize who he was? Because nine times out of ten, he wouldn't have a suit on. He could have a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. But you don't recognize by the outer. You recognize by the anointing. Because a real anointing will shift the atmosphere. A real anointing will send devils trembling. That's why when Jesus showed up, them demons start crying out, what would you have to do with us now? Are you here to persecute, persecute us before the time? I want to know how anointed are you? Oh, and this is the prophetic word and I'm done. Because I was really done right there until the Lord said, make sure you tell the people that their gift will make room for them and bring them before great men. That's one translation. The other translation said that your gift will open doors for you. And I've been preaching and teaching this morning. But I got one thing to tell you. There is a door that no man can shut to, that has been opened to the people of God. God says I had to clear up your vision, clear up your attitude. I had to get you together because I'll set before you an open door that 
no man can shut. Not your mama or your daddy. Not your road dog or your best friend. This door you're about to run into is called the promise. And the promises of God are yeah. And him, amen. What's getting ready to happen to Restoration Life Church? Because he sees us as one man. He said, you're going to walk in this new promise together. Your old is going to be passed away. And when God does this, blessings are going to fall from the north, south, east, and west. Get ready, Restoration. I've been waiting for you to get yourself together. I've been waiting for you to let go of the past. I've been waiting for you to stop feeling sorry for yourself. I've been waiting for you to stop talking about yesterday because you don't understand what's getting ready to happen. Eyes haven't seen, nor ears heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. The blessings that's about to hit this house. I want you to do me a favor. Start moving around. Because that's how much room we gonna need. I sit in the bisha, ribi under the bohosha, and as you're moving, some of you gonna move into a new house. You ain't got enough room. You gonna need new land. You ain't got enough room. You need new closet space for the new shoes. You need new closet space for the new dresser. You need new closet space for the new clothes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, honor your gift and the gift of others. And as you honor your gift, God says I'm a blessing. Because you see yourself clearly. Your gold, your rubies, your diamonds, your treasure, and earthen vessels. You anointed and no devil in hell can take the anointing from you. Somebody say yes. Yes to his will. Yeah. Somebody say yes. You're moving into a season called surely, surely goodness and mercy. Follow me all the days of my life. You're moving into a season called surely. I'm going to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. You don't have room enough to receive. You're moving into a season called surely where every enemy is going to have to get away from you. Every devil is going to be shifted because what you got to do, the Bible says that he's going to open a door, but there's going to be many adversaries. Folk going to dislike you because you're blessed. Folks going to talk about you because you're blessed. Folks going to be jealous of you because you're blessed. Less. Folks are going to be saying all manner of things, but what they don't know, every time they open their mouth, God says, I'm going to take you higher. I'm going to take you higher. Higher in God. Somebody say yes. You're getting ready to go higher to the next level, the next dimension. Somebody say yes. I'm going higher. The Lord is my light my salvation who shall I fear the lord strength of my life of whom shall i be afraid when the wicked even my enemies and foes came upon me to eat of my flesh they stumbled and fell though a host should encamp against me my heart should not fear check it out one thing, one thing have I desired. That what I seek after, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. One thing I need you to know, you dwell in the secret place 
of the Most High. And when you're in the secret place, a thousand may fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. I got to prophesy to this church. You worried about disease and biological things and warfare. Biological warfare God told me to tell you don't you worry about one thing I got you covered I got your children's covered I got your children's children's covered it ain't over until the fat lady sing and when the fat lady sings it's gonna be the body of Christ that's translated out of earth into heaven and until we crown him as one body we got to wait and they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. My God, I feel the power of God. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. The fat lady. Oh, the fat lady. I got to give you this. The fat lady having sung. The fat lady is the body. And until we all come together singing holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, that means we are all in process. We're in process. But one day, one day, one day, Gabriel, it's going to blow the horn. And we're going to all be changed. In a moment, we don't even preach like this no more. In the twinkling of an eye. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? For the sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be unto God who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I got one more thing to tell you, and you gonna preach it. Look at your neighbor and tell him you got the victory. You got it, I got it, you got it, got the victory. I got the V-I-C, T-O-R-Y. I got the V-I-C, T-O-R-Y. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan to get behind. Victory today is mine. I told Satan to get behind. I got the victory. Yeah! I got the victory. Somebody praise him. Somebody give him glory. You walking out of here with the victory. You walking out of here with the victory. You walking out of here. I don't care what's going on. Victory is yours. I don't care what it looks like. Victory is yours. Why? No weapon for the gifts you shall be able to prosper. Victory. I got it. I thank God. I got it. No matter what you're facing, God said you got the victory because you see yourself from the right perspective. You know who you are. I dare you to put a praise on what you received. Hallelujah. Victory. Hey, hey, hey. I got it. know what the doctor said but whose report you gon' believe I believe the report of the Lord and the report is victory the report is testimony the report is I move forward the report is God got a miracle with my name on it somebody say yes somebody say yes yeah 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 Some of y'all don't get the memo. And that's why 
you sitting back taking a chill pill. I said, well, that's nice. But if you understood what was being said today, you will run up out of here and you will claim your victory. Are there two or three of you that have connected with me and say, I got it. 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 God. He didn't give up on me. He didn't kill me. He gave me another chance to reach this day and say, I got something for you. He left gifts to me and you one of those gifts and he bestowed you with gifts. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout thank you Jesus. Yes, I got it. Victory. command you see that to take up your weapons every for the Lord has given me authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all powers of Satan he thought he won but God said I waited for the day where you was gonna kill Goliath and some of y'all don't know it your Goliath is dead because of your praise your Goliath is dead because of your steadfastness your Goliath is dead because you didn't give up your Goliath is dead because you say yes to God and no to the devil your Goliath is dead and you acting like you didn't win but I beg to differ you want You won! You won! Wait. You so won that if you die absent from the body, present with the Lord, I won. Oh! Oh! Oh, oh, see, see. <laughs> I'm laughing because I won. Oh, I won. And if you want, find you a neighbor and say, neighbor, let's go to this dance. It's a victory dance. I won, you won. I'm praising God for you. You praise God for me. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I tell you. I tell you. Come on. You won. to the body of Christ. It ain't over. You won. You won. You won. You won. I tell you. Hold tight. Remind this. Oh. Woo. Yes. 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 Yes, yes, you won, you won. The devil is a liar. 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 You won, 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 you won. You won, you won, yeah, the devil is a liar, the devil is a liar. You won. You won. You won. You 
one. Wait! This next phrase, wait, this next phrase is gonna be for those who know you should be dead. But God gave you restoration. If you know that, get out into the aisle and give God a crazy praise. Go, 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 go. You know you should be there. Yeah, oh, shot, Alabama. You made it, 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 I made it, I made it, I made it, I made it, you 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 made it, I made it, who shut up, made it, made it, made it, made it. Made it, made it, made it, made it, you made it, I made it, you made it, I made it. You made it, I made it, you made it, I made it. You made it, I made it, you made it. already come grace that has brought us safe this far grace that's gonna lead us home oh what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer you know why so many, for you all that are looking around at the others that's praising God with so much passion, because you don't know their testimony. If you knew some of these people's testimony, you would jump up and start shouting for them. But you made it. the law shall renew their strength they shall mount up always 
As eagles, run and not get weary. 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 Don't be weary and well doing. Who in this season? Oh! Good God from glory. Oh! You made it! You made it! You made it! Can I take the track off? My eyes went a couple of places and we're gonna leave. A couple of places. This, this family here, woman of God. Oh, oh yeah, you with the white sweater. You ain't hiding from me, I see you. I know when who's annoying it. Can you stand for me? Are these your, is this your family? Oh, wait oh, yeah, man, I can't hear. What is it? Are you all family? Yeah, y'all family. Spiritual, spiritual, Christ. Okay, you got to it. It's nothing wrong with the child. It's something wrong with your boundaries. Moses didn't honor his gift and missed the earthly promised land. His gift was communication. That means he couldn't say everything. He had to be sanctified in front of the people. It's a danger in not honoring your gift. It's a danger. It's a danger. This is important, people of God. This is important. The Israelites did not honor the gift of Jesus being amongst them. Jesus showed up. He said, I am the manna that fell from heaven. He said, I am the way. I'm the truth and the life. He showed up and they did not recognize him. If Jesus walked through the door right now, how many of you would recognize who he was? Because nine times out of ten, he wouldn't have a suit on. He'd have a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. But you don't recognize by the outer. You recognize by the anointing because a real anointing will shift the atmosphere. A real anointing will send devils trembling. That's why when Jesus showed up, them demons start crying out, what would you have to do with us now? Are you here to persecute, persecute us before the time? I want to know how anointed are you? Oh, and this is the prophetic word and I'm done. Because I was really done right there until the Lord said, make sure you tell the people that their gift will make room for them and bring them before great men. That's one translation. The other translation said that your gift will open doors for you. And I've been preaching and teaching this morning. But I got one thing to tell you. There is a door that no man can shut that has been open to the people of God. God says I have to clear up your vision, clear up your attitude. I have to get you together because I'll set before you an open door that no man can shut. Not your mama or your daddy, not your road dog or your best friend. This door you're about to run into is called the promise. And the promises of God are yea and him 
Amen. What's getting ready to happen to Restoration Life Church? Because he sees us as one man. He said, you're going to walk in this new promise together. Your old is going to be passed away. And when God does this, blessings are going to fall from the north, south, east, and west. Get ready, Restoration. I've been waiting for you to get yourself together. I've been waiting for you to let go of the past. I've been waiting for you to stop feeling sorry for yourself. I've been waiting for you to stop talking about yesterday because you don't understand what's getting ready to happen. Eyes haven't seen, nor ears heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. The blessings that's about to hit this house. I want you to do me a favor. Start moving around. Because that's how much room we going to need. And as you're moving, some of you going to move into a new house. You ain't got enough room. You're going to need new land. You ain't got enough room. You need new closet space for the new shoes. You need new closet space for the new dresser. You need new closet space for the new clothes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Honor your gift and the gift of others. And as you honor your gift, God says I'm going to bless you. Because you see yourself clearly. Your gold, your rubies, your diamonds, your treasure in earthen vessels. You anoint it and no devil in hell can take the anointing from you. Somebody say yes. Yes to his will. Yeah. Somebody say yes. You're moving into a season called surely, surely goodness and mercy. Follow me all the days of my life. You're moving into a season called surely. I'm going to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. You don't have room enough to receive. You're moving into a season called surely where every enemy is going to have to get away from you. Every devil is going to be shifted because what you got to do, the Bible says that he going to open a door, but there's going to be many adversaries. Folk going to dislike you because you're blessed. Folks going to talk about you because you're blessed. Folks going to be jealous of you because you're blessed. Folks are going to be saying all manner of things, but what they don't know, every time they open their mouth, God says, I'm going to take you higher. I'm going to take you higher. Higher in God. Somebody say yes. You get ready to go higher to the next level, the next dimension. Somebody say yes. I'm going higher. The Lord is my light my salvation who shall I fear the law strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked even my enemies and foes came upon me to eat of my flesh they stumbled and fell though a host should encamp against me my heart should not fear check it out one thing, one thing have I desired that what I seek after, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. One thing I need you to know, you dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And when you're in the secret place, a thousand may fall at thy side, 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. I gotta prophesy to this church. You worried about disease and biological things.
things and warfare biological warfare God told me to tell you don't you worry about one thing I got you covered I got your children's covered I got your children's children's covered it ain't over until the fat lady sing and when the fat lady sings it's gonna be the body of Christ that's translated out of earth into heaven and until we crown him as one body we got to wait and they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength my God I feel the power of color somebody say yes somebody say yes the fat lady oh the fat lady I gotta give you this the fat lady haven't sung the fat lady is the body and until we all come together singing holy 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 Lord God Almighty that means we are all in process we in process but one day one day, one day, Gabriel is going to blow the horn and we're going to all be changed. In a moment, we don't even preach like this no more. In the twinkling of an eye, oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? For the sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be unto God who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I got one more thing to tell you, and you gonna preach it. Look at your neighbor and tell him you got the victory. You got it. I got it. You got it. Got the victory. I got the V-I-C. T-O-R-Y. I got the V-I-C. T-O-R-Y. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan to get behind. Victory today is mine. I told Satan to get behind. I got the victory. Yeah. I got the victory. Somebody praise him. Somebody give him glory. You walking out of here with the victory. You walking out of here with the victory. You walking out of here. I don't care what's going on. Victory is yours. I don't care what it looks like. Victory is yours. Why? No weapon for the against you shall be able to prosper. Victory. I got it. I thank God. I got it. No matter what you're facing, God said you got the victory because you see yourself from the right perspective. You know who you are. I dare you to put a praise on what you received. Hallelujah. Victory. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. know what the doctor said but whose report you gonna believe I believe the report of the Lord and the report is victory the report is testimony the report is I move forward the report is God got a miracle with my name on it somebody say yes somebody say yes yeah 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 I thank God. Some of y'all don't get the memo. And that's why you sitting back taking a chill pill and say, well, that's nice. But if you understood what was being said today, you will run up out of here and you will claim your victory. Are there two or three of you that have connected with me and say, I got I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Who 
I got it. on me. He didn't kill me. He gave me another chance to reach this day and say, I got something for you. He left gifts to me and you one of those gifts and he bestowed you with gifts. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout thank you Jesus. Yes, I got it. Victory. Command you see that to take up your weapons every for the Lord has given me authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all powers of Satan. He thought he won, but God said I waited for the day where you was going to kill Goliath. And some of y'all don't know it. Your Goliath is dead because of your praise. Your Goliath is dead because of your steadfastness. Your Goliath is dead because you didn't give up. Your Goliath is dead because you say yes to God and no to the devil. Your Goliath is dead and you acting like you didn't win. But I beg to differ. You won. You won. You won. Wait. You so won that if you die absent from the body, present with the Lord, I won. Oh! 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 oh. See? See? <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because I won. Oh, I won. And if you want, find you a neighbor and say, neighbor, let's go to this dance. It's a victory dance. I won. You won. I'm praising God for you. You praise God for me. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I tell you. I tell you. Come on. You won. I got a message to the body of Christ. It ain't over. You won. You won. You won. I tell you. Hold tight. Remind this. Oh. Woo. Yes. 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 You won. You won. The devil is a liar. 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 You won. 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 Yeah. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Wait, this next phrase, wait, 
this next race is going to be for those who know you should be dead. But God gave you restoration. If you know that, get out into the aisle and give God a crazy praise. Go, 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 go. You know you should be dead. You made it, 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 I made it, I made it, I made it, I made it, you 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 made it. I made it, who oh, shut up? Made it, 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 you made it, I 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 made it. You made it, I made it. We have already come. Grace that has brought us safe this far. Grace that's going to lead us home. Oh, what a privilege it is to carry everything. To God in prayer. You know why so many, for you all that are looking around at the others, that's praising God with so much passion. Because you don't know their testimony. If you knew some of these people's testimony, you would jump up and start shouting for them. But you made it. Somebody run, 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 run. Woman of God, you just ran right into your next level. Hey, run, run. They that wait upon the law shall renew their strength. They shall mount up always as eagles. Run and not get weary. Run and not get weary. Run and not get weary. Run and 
not get weary. Run and not get weary. Run and not get weary. Run and not get weary. Don't be weary and well doing. Oh, in due season. Oh, good God from glory. Oh, you, you made it. <laughs> 